Remember back to one day ago when John McCain and Sarah Palin were pummeling Barack Obama? McCain Palin had both the lead in some national polls and all the rhetorical momentum. Woe were the Democrats yesterday. Until Lehman Brothers, Merrill Lynch, and AIG took a wrecking ball to the previously slow crumbling economic picture, and John McCain once again let slip the words, the fundamentals of our economy are strong. If ever there was a stump speech line that needed revising in light of ongoing events, that was it. And now the Democrats are on the offense again. Americans essentially had forgotten what the Obama campaign looks like on the political offense because they've been playing so much D in the past two months. If you've forgotten what a Democratic campaign looks like on the offense, if you've forgotten what the offensive looks like when it's about something other than Paris Hilton or lipstick or sex ed for kindergartners, then the Obama campaign would like to reintroduce itself to you. Here's Joe Biden delivering the punch today in Pennsylvania. Where is the change? Well, folks, don't buy this malarkey. And don't let your friends... Don't tell me who's on the side of middle class people trying to make it. It is not George Bush and it is not John McCain. It's time for America to get up. It's time for you to get up. I'm ready to get up. Barack Obama is ready to get up. So let's get up and change this nation now. Speaking today as well in Golden, Colorado, Barack Obama hit his stride too. Make no mistake, my opponent is running for four more years of policies that will throw the economy further out of balance. His outrage at Wall Street would be more convincing if he wasn't offering them more tax cuts. What we've seen the last few days is nothing less than the final verdict on an economic philosophy that has completely failed. And I am running for President of the United States because the dream of the American people must not be endangered anymore. For weeks, Obama and his campaign have looked slow to respond to McCain's campaign. But not today. Within hours of McCain's biggest gaffe of the campaign thus far, the fumbling repetition of the fundamentals are strong line, there was this from the Obama campaign. Our economy, I think, still fundamentals are of our economy are strong the fundamentals are of our economy are strong the fundamentals are of our economy are strong so that's Barack Obama and Joe Biden on offense which raises the question, what do McCain and Palin look like on defense? It's the first time we have seen it since they have been a pair. And fair warning, it is not pretty. After backtracking for two news cycles now on just exactly what a fundamental is in our economy and how McCain can insist that things are going strong, John McCain tried to regain his footing today by making a new suggestion about how to fix the economy. We need a 9-11 commission. and We need a commission to figure out what went wrong and how to fix it. Ooh, a commission. Will it take months to offer recommendations? And will President McCain attend a fundraiser instead of voting to implement its blue ribbon recommendations? Because that's what Senator McCain did on the real 9-11 commission. Underwhelmed by McCain's big, let's form a commission idea, the nation turned its lonely eyes to the McCain campaign's surrogates for more information. McCain's chief economic advisor, Douglas Holtz Eakin, did speak with reporters today and told them this, quote, there's no magic solution, and I don't think it's at this moment imperative to write down exactly what the plan has to be. Technically, we should note that Mr. Eakin is correct. It is not imperative to write down an economic plan or to be specific. It would be a good idea to do that. If you're running for president, it might be reassuring to the country if you did. But true enough, it is not actually imperative. If the McCain campaign's proud absence of answers were not damning enough, then they reached to Al Gore invented the Internet territory, which we weirdly foreshadowed on last night's program. Mr. Holtz Eakin, McCain's top economic advisor, today proclaimed his candidate's leadership in the Senate by holding up his BlackBerry and bragging, quote, you're looking at the miracle that John McCain helped to create. John McCain invented the BlackBerry. Really? Even though he says he doesn't know how to use the email? 
I totally thought the Blackberry was invented in Canada. Very confusing. Uh, but somewhere, I should say, Al Gore is smiling. One last point, the McCain defense eventually got messy today, courtesy of McCain's other top economic advisor, Carly Fiorina. Does Sarah Palin, John McCain obviously thinks she has the experience to become president of the United States. Do you think she has the experience to run a major company like Hewlett Packard? No, I don't. But you know what? That's not what she's running for. Wow. Uh, just to be clear, in the McCain campaign's reasoning, Sarah Palin is not experienced enough to run a company, but could totally run the country. Ms. Fiorina then attempted to save herself by then uh, proclaiming that John McCain isn't qualified to run Hewlett Packard either. We may have just had a glimpse into just how sacred the McCain campaign holds the interests of corporations. Company first. Joining us now, Democratic Senator Claire McCaskill of Missouri. She's a national co-chair of the Obama campaign. Senator McCaskill, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Congratulations on your show, Rachel. Thank you. It's nice to have you here. Um, I will tell you honestly that the Obama campaign, in my estimation, has been rope doped lately. The daily attacks from the McCain side have left Senators Obama and Biden with barely a word in edgewise. Uh, right now, it feels like all that's changed now that everybody wants to talk about the economy. Do you see this as day one of the rest? of the campaign? Well, I think a couple of things happened. One, I think the McCain campaign went too far and lost their their vice grip on the notion of honor, because you can't have honor without honesty. And they began telling lies. And when you start telling lies and the media, I mean all kinds of media, begin to circle the wagons and call you out on it, that in fact puts you on defense and then of course John McCain can't help himself Rachel he has to defend the status quo because the policies of the status quo are his so he has to say the fundamentals of our economy are strong because he can point to no difference in his economic plan than that of the guy who drove us into this ditch George Bush well Senator McCain's campaign said that when he said the fundamentals of the economy were strong what he really meant was that American workers are strong Strong, and therefore, Senator Obama must be anti-worker. I have to ask for your response to that. Well, he's been in Washington a long time. And when you say something wrong, uh, you're kind of taught not to say, I goofed up and said it wrong, or I, gosh, I shouldn't have said that. Instead, you try to make it into something else. Everyone knows what he said. And everyone knows what it means when you talk about the fundamentals of an economy. You're talking about job creation. You're talking about commodity prices, how much people are paying for a loaf of bread. You're talking about the unemployment rates, inflation rates, uh, the credit market availability. And frankly, none of those things are strong. They are coming unwound under the Bush-McCain economic policies. We have seen um, greater and lesser degrees of message discipline from the McCain campaign. As I said at the top here, they have had a number of different attacks, sort of new attacks every day, many of them personal, many of them disproven against Senator Obama. But they also have stayed on this message that an Obama administration would raise your taxes, that they're, the big Obama-Biden plan for the economy is to raise taxes across the board. What's the pushback against that from your side? Another lie. Um, Barack Obama's tax plan cuts taxes. It also cuts spending. Uh, we have ways to pay for the economic incentives that are going to go to the middle class, which deserve it. Uh, John McCain wants to cut more taxes for the same people that George Bush cut taxes for, those guys in Wall Street that are having a hard time today. Uh, on the other hand, Barack Obama will cut taxes for the vast majority, 95% of working Americans. So it's another lie. And what I love is every time somebody catches John McCain and says, you know, hey, aren't you lying about this? He says, well, if only Barack Obama would have come to my town hall meetings, like somehow Barack Obama not going with the schedule John McCain wanted is why John McCain can't control his campaign and run it with honor and honesty. Last question. After eight years of Republican rule, we are now in the midst of what may be the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. We are in two deeply unpopular, endless wars. How is Senator Obama not soundly trouncing Senator McCain in the polls right now? Why is it as close as it is? Well, I think we um, need to be realistic about that this is all kinds of change. 
mean, this is a special leader that came literally from obscurity just a few years ago uh, to break onto a national scene and inspire millions of people. And I think it is in a state like mine that is, you know, moderate to conservative. They want to get to know him. And as time goes on, not only are they getting to know him and feeling more comfortable with the fact that he's going to be their champion, but they also are getting to know John McCain better. And that will also work to our advantage. Senator Claire McCaskill of Missouri, national co-chair of the Obama campaign, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you.